Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today I wanted to bring you guys a bit of an off-the-cuff kind of tips and tricks video for uh, flying BFM in the F-14 Tomcat. I know that a lot of people have gotten a bit frustrated by it uh, from posts on Hoggett on the Facebook page and in various Discord groups that I belong to, and I thought I would help, uh, see if I could help you guys out. These two engagements that I have shown off here are two cherry pucked engagements that uh, were the two best that I think I flew in roughly a two and a half hour uh, flying session of just BFM uh, against uh, two of my friends, uh, Straywolf and James. James is the son of one of Heepler's fantastic F-14 oh, yeah. Tomcat oh, pilot uh, SMEs that they used for testing out the flight model and various systems in the F-14 Tomcat. And he is also probably one of the best F5 pilots uh, in DCS that I've ever seen. So while in this video we have some fun banter back and forth as we're dogfighting, we definitely are flying hard, trying to get advantage on each other, using all the strengths and weak and uh, trying to eliminate the weaknesses of our aircraft as we engage each other here. So this is a no no holds barred. Uh, kind of all-up dogfight between the F-14 Tomcat and the F-5. Now, a lot of people that are coming over from the F-18 to the F-14 are very surprised by how temperamental the uh, flight model of the F-14 Tomcat is. And this is simply because the F-14 does not have a uh, fly-by-wire FCS system the way the F-18 has. Your control inputs in the F-14 <laughs> go directly to the control surfaces of the aircraft itself, Strainer, which can lead Strainer. to some very violent um, maneuvers and departures if you fly the F-14 the way you fly the F-18. You can be as violent and as harsh on the stick and throttle as you want in the F-18. And the computer will dampen that out and make sure you stay within a good flight regimen um, in the F-18. The F-14, not so much. You gotta baby her a bit. And once you get used to what she can do and what she can't do, you can do things in the F-14 that you simply cannot get the FCS to do in the um, F-18 Hornet. The end of this engagement, where I get a really awesome guns kill on this F-5 uh, flown by James, is a perfect example of that, of a very desperate high G pull to get a very quick snapshot off um, that I believe you could not pull off in the F-18 Hornet. Okay. One of the ways to get better and better in the F-14 Tomcat is simple practice. You're going to really, really need... Uh, rudder pedals in the F-14. That is really a must. Uh, a twist stick is just not going to do it for you because you can't put in both lateral and vertical stick movements while also twisting the stick for a rudder. Also playing to the strengths of the F-14 Tomcat is a big one. When you're first starting out, make sure you're flying as an energy fighter for all of your engagements. One of the best things about the F-14 Tomcat, at least the F-14B and D models, with the awesome GE F-110 engines, is you've got uh, thrust for days. Absolute amazing thrust capabilities. Uh, probably better than a lot of the aircraft in DCS world. So if you get the F-14 down to about 60% fuel or less, you can absolutely dictate how the fight uh, plays out. As you can see in this engagement yeah. here, and in the second one that I fly, if I start to lose the advantage, I simply just yeah, okay. hit the burners, light the cans, and pull on up and go into a vertical loop dad, over the top of the up, fight. Scratch your balls, at your nose, and then come back down, spot them, and get them. Exactly, so that's just what James' dad, uh, his real F-14 Tomcat pilot, would say, is just pull up, fly up over the vertical, fly up over the top of the fight, you know, reset yourself, yeah, reset your mind, <laughs> scratch your balls, blow your nose, whatever you need to do, yeah. and then spot the enemy again, come back down and re-engage that okay, way. Okay, I got you now. Oh, don't black out on me, baby. 
And as you get better and better in the F-14 Tomcat, you can start to add in some uh, turning fight engagements into those vertical energy engagements as you see me engaging in here. I pull up hard, I get over the top of the fight, I see an advantage, and I go for it. I, pull, I do a couple turns to see if I can potentially get a shot off. And then I simply, if I lose the advantage again to this really tight turning F5 down low and uh, slow, I pull up and I restart the engagement. Oh my god, keep turning. As James said, flying against the F14, you see that F14 pull up into the vertical. It's like a snake coiling up ready to strike. Maybe he missed on that first strike, but he's coiling back up to re-energize and go for a second strike. And closer and closer. And a third or a fourth and so on. Where they meet is the problem. A lot of your engagements, whether it's in a more earthquake style server. Oh, you got me. Oh, we got oh there we go. We got that. We pulled the high and that hard desperation pull to get that really nice snapshot off. Made me use pretty much my whole magazine for that. Onto that F5. But as I was saying, whether you're in a a more of an airquakey server or a more scripted co-op camp uh, campaign mission or something like that, you're going to be uh, engaging a lot in very short dogfights that are very different from the character of an all-out uh, guns-only fight. And engaging and practicing in these BFM engagements will definitely really help uh, you engage better in those. Um, all aspect forward aspect firing missile engagements as it'll give you a lot more authority uh, to move the aircraft around the sky in invasive maneuvers to avoid missile shots. I lock, lock. Okay, but here we go in the second engagement coming down on high both aircraft playing to their strengths James is gonna stay low with his F5 and play to his strengths about uh, 300 knots and under I'm gonna keep playing to my strengths coming down to engage him but if I lose it I just pull up again and I reset the engagement in the F-14B you can work the throttles quite a bit because these GE F-110s are not nearly as temperamental as the F-14A's TF-30s once we get into the F-14A most F-14 pilots that I've talked to have stated that in the F-14A, you basically throw the throttles into full afterburner for a BFM engagement and leave them there. Due to the underpowered nature of the TF-30s, as well as if you start doing a lot of uh, violent throttle movements, you'll probably get a compressor stall. So don't get too, too used to a lot of really hard and violent throttle movements in the F-14B, unless you plan to fly the F-14B uh, for most of your DCS F-14 career. Five low. Another massive advantage the F-14 has over a lot of all other DCS world fighters is the simple fact that you have a second pair of eyeballs in the cockpit. On a six, you got this. When you're flying by yourself with Jester, Jester doesn't look inside the cockpit <laughs> and give you um, updates on airspeed and altitude, but he can help you spot that bandit if you need to go down, heads down in the cockpit to uh, figure out your airspeed or altitude very quickly. Oh, I heard a hit. Yep, I think I got you. And Jester helps me multiple, multiple times here in all of these engagements uh, against James. You see, when I lose sight of James, I just pull up into the vertical and try to reset the fight. In almost all of these turns, I'm using a combination of lateral stick movements and rudder, when I have, especially when I have AOA on the aircraft. And I think I missed a bit of an opportunity there, but that's alright. And we're flying right on the edge of the F-14's envelope there. We can see he pulled around really darn fast and that F5 down low and slow. So I know that I've lost the advantage and I pull up. 300. Okay. 
and see that we were right in the perfect flight regimen of the F5. Just below so I pulled up again, just reset the fight, yeah. do your thing, and come on back down. And he came up to meet me there, which surprised me. That's all right, as he's trading all of his energy for some altitude. Now, on a real F-14 with a real F-14, uh, a real person in your Rio seat, that Rio should be giving the pilot updates on altitude and airspeed at the uh, bottom and at the top of every vertical loop in a dogfight. And that allows the pilot to concentrate on flying the airplane and keeping the aircraft in the fight rather than looking down and getting his airspeed and altitude updates himself. If Heepler could implement that into the Jester, a solo player in the F-14 could dominate a lot of different aircraft in DCS world, in my opinion, with a good pilot. With a human Rio, if you're flying like a, a BFM tournament or something like that, definitely recommend having a human Rio in there to give you those altitude and airspeed updates. While you're flying in the vertical, as that can spot. really, really help Seeing the pilot. Your helps me spot you a lot easier. But as of now, those position updates of the yeah. bandit from Jester are extremely, extremely helpful, and reduces the pilot workload by quite a bit, allowing you to concentrate on flying the aircraft and uh, playing to the advantage of the very comp uh, complicated and temperamental flight model, the F-14 Tomcat. Yeah. It's just a very, very different experience flying the F-14 than you than flying the F-18 Hornet or the Mirage 2000 or any other fighter in DCS. It's probably most similar to the Flaming Cliffs F-15C, but still incredibly, incredibly different. And you kind of have to relearn how to engage in a dogfight in the F-14. Neither of you showed up. I could not see either of you. Eleven o'clock. Not su not surprised. And right there, I almost lost it. But some violent, violent rudder inputs, left and right there, helped re bring the F-14 back into the flight envelope and continue the fight. And we get really low, really slow here, and I threw a lot of really violent rudder inputs and really hard and sustained rudder inputs. I was able to pull the nose back down onto him. No. And going for a very nice tracking guns kill on our yeah. F5 adversary here. Ah! <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Very hard right rudder there to keep the aircraft pulling around on the F5. And. Oh, oh yes! Hey, check mom! Hey, check mom! So, like I said, the F14 hey, is just like nothing else in DCS world, <laughs> and I really, really <laughs> that mean that. And in my opinion, <laughs> a good F-14 Tomcat pilot could probably beat anyone else in any well, other aircraft. But, as always, Thanks it really comes down so to uh, the, the guy in the aircraft and oh, his experience yeah. over <laughs> necessarily the yeah. uh, aircraft itself. Got me a bunch of times, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit old-fashioned oh, yeah, when it man, comes to uh, like BFM skills and uh, BFM a, a tactics. Uh, yeah, when it comes to things like uh, slow speed, uh, nose pointability, I'd rather take the Ooh. fast and powerful That's energy fire of the F-14 That's over the is. slow speed noise, like nose pointability yeah. of the F-18 I just, I, I almost any like day. Faster than, than having the, what? The Everyone's got a different opinion, and just wanted to give you guys mine and give you guys a couple uh, ideas of how yeah. to fly the F-14 to its yeah, maximum. I mean, so thanks a lot, guys. If you liked the video, please give us a like and a subscribe. And... Fly safe and happy hunting. Thanks a lot, guys.